guys, this was huge news. We've already reported on the 73-page lawsuit that was filed against Diddy by Rodney Jones in February, but it's followed up by a huge FBI raid on Diddy's homes in both LA and Miami. There were at least three people detained by law enforcement. Two of them were his sons. It seems like he left his sons high and dry because the rumor has it Diddy is on the run from the cops. Bro just got up and left. He's out. Bro like, just got up and left. It's weird. So he He's like, was Yo, Justin, gone. Justin, man it, the fort. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah, his sons, Justin and King, 25 years old and 29 years old, were both on site at his Miami home. They were both seen in handcuffs. The, the All of the media outlets were in helicopters filming the whole thing from above. It was crazy I happening live. I saw yesterday that hashtag P. Diddler was already trending on. Yep, on it was. It was. Uh, there's a $20 one here from uh, Corey Anderson. Uh, Mary, you're like five feet. How much more room do you need on a plane? I mean, it could always help. Definitely. I think everyone wishes there were more room on the plane. Not me as much as other people, though. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take a look at that video, I guess, uh, from TMZ. The, uh... This is actually the Department and of Homeland Security. Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information. Those people have been detained. Bro, that's an unhinged amount of garbage cans. Oh, they can't see it, but that's an unhinged amount of garbage cans on the side of the road. Now we're trying to still connect. Look at that. There's a lot of trash, okay? Lot of trash, the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up this street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. And on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home yeah. in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily on. Never own anything in your name. Yeah, it's weird, right? So what this looks like is P. Diddy got a call. He got a warning that these raids were happening on his residences. And he had time to hightail it out of there and leave his sons high and dry to get arrested mm -hmm. by Homeland Security agents. Uh, they they so, released a statement. They said earlier yeah. today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, that's Homeland Security Investigations, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. And guess what? Further information has not been provided. Funny how that <laughs> so works. we don't actually know right now if Diddy is in custody or not. Is he actually escaped to some remote island or is he getting questioned by the cops? Basically, it, his private jet uh, owned under his name left the U.S. Went that morning Antigua. from Miami uh, or sorry, from L.A., so this says private jet owned by P. Diddy left the U.S. Combs residences were raided by DHS in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. The flight path of the plane appears to be headed towards Cape Verde. Cape Verde has no extradition treaty with the U.S., but then they got community noted. And it says that his aircraft actually landed in Antigua yeah. on March 25th. And at this time, it does not appear to be proceeding to Cape Verde. So there was actually a photo of the plane that Don Lucra posted. Uh, I guess his name for the private jet is Love Air, and it's grounded in Antigua. And his travel is now restricted in the Caribbean island. But this is the confusing part. Apparently, Diddy wasn't on his private jet when it was making its escape route 
to Antigua. We have this video of him. Yeah, TMZ filmed Diddy uh, at the Miami airport. Here he is. He's just pacing around the airport, looking directionless. What next, Diddy? And then. And this is at the same time that the raids are going on. Like they didn't think to put an arrest warrant out on him, the, the, or one of the most suspicious things I saw was uh, the fact that you know he they did all this without knowing his exact whereabouts, which I don't buy for a second. Right? Yeah. I mean, I I understand that he might have gotten a warning from the feds directly. Correct. So Ian Carroll, the independent journalist who's been talking about the Diddy lawsuit, about Michael Jackson, a lot of different things, he posted TMZ filmed Diddy at the Miami airport yesterday. He can't have been on his private jet that apparently flew from L.A. to Antigua and Barbados today after he was raided. So my guess is they flew a bunch of videos, evidence, and maybe assets to safety outside of the U.S., and Diddy is still on the run, but I'm guessing they find him by the time we wake up in the morning, that is today. The most important thing to remember here, though, is Diddy was not the top of the chain. He was just the face of the operation. They're likely to try to pin this all on him and save the more important people above him. Our job is not to let them. So Candace Owens echoed this sentiment, saying the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he's going to be the fall guy so that they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They're raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. That's how this works. So I'm sure that everyone here agrees that obviously the... Um, the purpose of three letter agencies is not to look out for the best interests of the American people. And this is the most high profile trafficking case since Epstein. He's a fall guy. And we know that Epstein was also a fall guy. And Epstein had his own fall guy, which was Ghislaine Maxwell. Wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they were flying evidence out of the country on that plane. Were they flying, flying evidence flying, outside uh, of U.S. jurisdiction? You know, probably a bunch of blackmail tapes on famous people that they've got for over the years. Are you joking or do you think it's a possibility? Possibility. You know? I think it's definitely yeah. a possibility. And, um, you know, maybe the feds are in on it because... As we know from details of the Rodney Jones lawsuit, Diddy actually had connections with corrupt cops. Yeah. He had a cleanup guy who could convince cops to let off all Diddy and all of his friends for suspicious activity. Yeah. So we already know that they might be implicated as well. and They have an interest in conducting a fake investigation into Diddy and you know, his homes, which were reportedly just littered with secret cam cameras maybe, and you know, secret went, audio recordings. The feds went in there and destroyed drugs. all the evidence that were in there. Yes, drugs, yeah. unregistered firearms, everything. They might have been hiding or destroying evidence. Yeah. There's a high probability that that's the case. I just thought um, it was interesting that they didn't suppose they supposedly didn't know his whereabouts when this happened. I don't buy that for a second. I think they knew exactly where he was. Yeah. Also, people were pointing out this perfectly mirrors scenes from his old music videos. Yeah. One in the hypnotized it, it, music video. It brought both of these brought me back to my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. So he's on the yacht and there are helicopters full of federal agents following him in that music video. And then um, what was the other one? Uh, oh, um. It was with Biggie. Yeah, and Mace, I, I forget. Yeah, there was another music video from the 90s where they were getting onto a private jet and there were four black Mercedes full of feds coming after them and they had to escape. Mm -hmm. So predictive programming, it's a thing. Uh, oh, I'll use, also, it's fair to point out that on March 25th, 1997 is when Notorious B.I.G. released the incredible album, Life After Death, which I still have. Um, mm. Yes. Weird timing. Yep. Uh, Weird March 25th, timing. 1997, also, years to the day. apparently Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy was filed on the same day as Kim Porter's death anniversary. That's, that's kind of weird. Yep. Just a lot of weird connections being made. One of them, people are talking about Diddy's connection with Prince Harry in relation to this lawsuit. So 
Diddy was allegedly using access to Prince Harry, quote, as a means to obtain sexual favors. That might be a bit of a stretch, but here is the actual quote from the lawsuit. This says affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry. Yeah. And I looked this up. There is actually photo evidence of Prince Harry palling around with Yes. He diddy and and uh kanye. and kanye there is this photo of them it's prince william prince harry kanye and p diddy hanging out at an after party in july 2007 in london after a concert for diana a concert that these rappers i guess dedicated to their late mother princess diana i love the idea I, i'm sorry but there's just something funny about rappers rapping for princess die i mean i don't i don't know all the details but that's just it looks like um kanye is like wearing those those glasses that they were very have popular the slits that in time. them what are those called i, I uh it was stunner shades <laughs> he was wearing yeah. these like white uh i guess stunner shades and having like harry try them on or whatever yeah but they were all seen hanging out at, I mean, as, forgive, at a party forgive back my, then. Um, forgive my um, black pilled nature on stuff like this, but uh, we're never going to see the names printed on the on the Epstein client list, and we're never we're not going to see justice for any of those people. If you want to know how the media works over time to craft even the narrative around a situation like this, when I went to look for photos today for the thumbnails, right? Um, the first picture that comes up when I, when I Googled Diddy was a picture of him and Donald Trump from like 1997. But we, as, uh, as we all know, he was actually a, a Democrat and did stuff with Hillary and, and campaign for Hillary and stuff like that. You mean so, Diddy was? Yes. Well, so, Trump also was a Democrat, right? But I'm, but I'm so. saying that, but that's not the picture that comes up. It's, it doesn't, it's not Hillary and, and Diddy that's coming up when you search Diddy's name right now. It's Diddy and, and Trump from decades before the stuff with Hillary. Right, and it's we're supposed all... to believe that E. Jean Carroll is a credible mm -hmm. accuser. It's just, uh, yeah, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, and a lot of people are talking about the Diddy lawsuit in the context of some kind of great awakening that there was ushered great, in oh, by Cat Williams. There will never be a great awakening. It's not a real thing. I it's mean, inter everyone it's is the saying... Internet. The internet gets a select group of people. You might be able to wake more than the average amount of people up to corruption or bad behavior on behalf of, uh, you know, on the behalf of celebrities, but that does not mean that the world comes to terms with things like that. That's just not how things work. No, I agree. That's not how things work, because look at Quiet on Set. Everyone forgot about it, but... Everyone is yeah. saying everyone is saying that Cat Williams was the whistleblower for the exposure of the entire rap industry. There's a twenty dollar note one from Crispy Lake Transport LLC. Uh, he said nobody knew who Kanye was in ninety seven. I said two thousand seven, not ninety seven. Yeah, two thousand seven. That was that was uh, well after Kanye was relevant. What's well, even funnier that they're doing like a concert for Princess Diana and like I guess it was like a ten year anniversary or something like that. Or? Must have been because they look yeah. to be like late teens or early twenties in those photos. The the princes do. I guess it's just it's different because when we when we look at this stuff all day, it's like you see a whole bunch of stuff happen, but nothing ever changes. Um, again, you're never gonna find. You're never gonna see those people that uh, that were on Epstein's client list come to uh, come to bear. They're not gonna be brought to justice. Nothing's gonna change. That's just my take on these things. I say don't hold. Don't like hold your well being and your and your and your hopes on the idea that a bunch of evil people get their comeuppance because that's not usually how it works. I think the question that remains is: Was P Diddy? A Jeffrey Epstein figure in this, or was he someone's Ooh. Ghislaine Maxwell? I like I like Deer Scream. He says I prefer a great noticing. Yes, okay. I, I prefer if more people just notice. I disagree. Once in a while. I disagree. I don't think that outside of the intensely internet sphere, people are paying attention. No, to they're this, not. Really, they're, I mean. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like every, I think it's I. T I tell you this all the time. I said most people are victims of. We're all victims of being in our own echo chambers of sorts, created by algorithms on our phones and on our computers. And you could say that we could say this like, oh, everyone's waking up. Cat Williams woke everyone up, except for I'm like, yeah, except for the nine gazillion people who didn't watch that interview and don't have any clue that this stuff is going on. 
Rhaegar Targaryen sent twenty dollars. Dude, I gotta ask, did Diddy do it? D did did Diddy, 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 do Diddy it? didn't do it? Did he dip to Denny's before he was dunked as the Diddy Diddler, or did he didn't? Diddy 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 did he also remember vote or die? Yeah, that's what he's he, so in this picture with Hillary, he's wearing a vote or die shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one out of ten normies have heard of Jeffrey Epstein didn't K himself, and they think it's a meme. <laughs> so, I don't think that this is part of some great awakening necessarily. But think about it. Um, about the implications this could have for the rap industry. It could be actually a big deal because, you know, if Diddy gets taken down from his position of power, a lot of the people that he is silencing or a lot of people that he has on a leash right now are going to be relatively free for once. Yeah. And maybe they can talk about their experiences. We have another $20 from Dat Pie over there. First, I was 80% convinced, then 100%. Now I'm a million percent convinced that Cody Rhodes is a black man, especially after privileged billionaire board member The Rock beat him bloody last night while calling him boy. Uh, I heard about that. I, what? I yeah, I, I haven't watched it, but yeah. It's uh, going to be interesting to see how WrestleMania plays out this year, guys. Uh, look, the... All Tupac stuff. is coming out of witness protection. Let's go. Now, oh, would, no, no, no. That would no. be the white pill this story deserves. Uh, would be Tupac coming out of witness. It'd be Tupac and Biggie coming out of witness protection. I don't know. I, I think um, and it's. Biggie's lost a bunch of weight. It's interesting that the Diddy lawsuit name dropped Prince Harry because, I mean. Is he going to be fighting that? We already know that Prince Andrew was buddies with Epstein. Yep. And the royal family has a lot of skeletons in their closet to hide. Nothing ever. Like, like, like whatever. Can, what, what was the real big, like, benefit to the Eps, to the Gillian Maxwell trial? Like, what really came of that? Other than her going Other to than her being in prison now? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean... They're still like selectively doling out details to the my, public. My point with all of this stuff is it's not supposed to be a black pill in the, in the sense that I think that these people won't get brought to justice, even though I don't think that they will. My point is, is to find joy in other aspects of your life and don't rely on, you know, the, the hopeful um, trials of billionaires and millionaires and, you know, hope, you know, people that are bad getting their, uh, you know, getting their comeuppance. Like, don't put your hopes on that. By the way, I wanted to remind you guys of that video we showed you of Diddy and Justin Bieber. When Justin was 14 years old, Diddy was talking about having a 48-hour sleepover with Justin Bieber. And who is to know whether that involved a freak-off? And what kind of stuff was Justin Bieber getting exposed to at such a young age I mean, Usher in Diddy's care? Thing. Usher was saying the same thing. Yeah, and, and let's let's show them the Usher Diddy video. was Usher's mentor. Okay, let's so think back video. to that. Here's a video of Usher when he was on with Howard Stern. Moved to New York City, and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some. Camp? If anybody tries to send you to something called Puffy Flavor Camp, just say no. More importantly, if anyone tries to send your kid to something called Puffy Flavor Camp, just say no. Just say no. Yeah, yeah that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to in the nineties. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orgying like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but. Did I, hey, it was curious. Why I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh -huh. and I Thank you. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans, 
Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, okay. <laughs> On a real note, what self-respecting adult would party until 4 a.m. with a child? Mm -hmm. I seriously, like, think about the moral character of an adult who would be partying, binge drinking, drinking, and orgying even in the same building it, as a child. It's fair to point out, Suge Knight says, P uh, people, the raids today wasn't for Diddy. It was to destroy the incriminating stuff on powerful men. Hashtag Epstein. Hashtag Diddy. Hashtag Clive Davis. Yeah. Um... Oh, but I don't know I how he's tweeting from prison. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.